G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. I think last time I might have rushed myself in choosing my base location. I was worried about whether there were going to be any Reavers coming by. I was worried about having a flat enough spot to land. I wanted to be able to land somewhere near iron. So I kind of did all those things, but I didn't really think through the most important thing for a base on an asteroid that I'm setting up the way that I am, which is I need sunlight. Yes, I'm getting the cheaty light through the planet, so I'm probably getting about as much light as I deserve to get on this asteroid. But I think I would also like to potentially move the base to somewhere where I've got a bit of a nicer outlook. Because I kind of can look down on the planet here, but I can't look up and I don't get much sunlight. Well, I don't get any sunlight to the base whatsoever. And I would like to have a bit of a view up to the stars and potentially off to the gas giant more than anything else. So my thought was to scout out this asteroid and see where might be a better spot. I kind of like the idea of these little blobs of asteroid down here, but I fear they may be a little too small and also, yeah, I think, I mean, this one might be the only one I could use, but I think it's also going to run into the same problem of the sun ending up, whoa, of the sun ending up behind that overhang. And that doesn't really work. So let's turn my HUD on just in case I'm starting to run low on hydrogen. Uh, then I suppose there's sort of this little knobbly out bit here and this one over here. I kind of want it to be on this side of the asteroid because that was also something I kept in mind last time but didn't possibly put at the right priority level. The reason I want this side is if you have a look down at where my base is... I'm pretty confident that I want to be on this side for launching anything down towards the base. Especially if I'm going to have to launch it with some energy behind it to try and get it even closer to base than I would have gotten with just a dead drop. I'm thinking this might be the spot. Let's have a look at where the sun is for here. The sun, I am fairly confident, goes straight down there and then should come up over there. So somewhere on this end, I may well be able to get sun on the solar panels throughout the entire day. One thing I've been thinking about during the week was how I could design a base that I kind of liked the look of. And I'm thinking something that sticks out beyond the asteroid, something that's got support beams running into the asteroid, but is predominantly out hovering over nothing. And that'll have a bit of a landing pad, a little bit of a living area, and then have all of the industrial stuff up here on the rock of the asteroid. So I can kind of make it all a bit messy and a bit disorganized. With that in mind, I need to look at the base down here and see if I can come up with a way to potentially move some of these items. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to. My worry is that using the remora to move anything it's going to use up so much fuel that I'll be putting the remora at risk. But I'd kind of want to check and test anyway. <laughs> so what I think I should start with is laying out a bit of the base up there. So that means building a bunch of steel plate. I know it's sad to put all the effort into making this base here and then just move, but I think in the long run it's going to be worth doing. And for those of you wondering, I won't be using the command module to do any of these movements because the command module has very little fuel given it's all small fuel tanks. But also, it doesn't have much strength. Despite having those landing gear, it really doesn't have much strength to lift at all because it's only got that one lifting thruster right there. That is the only one, isn't it? Yeah. It's just got one lifting thruster, so unless I was kind of flying with those with the three facing down, I don't think I could lift anything of meaning, like a meaningful mass. Alrighty, let's have a bit of a look here and see if I can line this up right. So, 
If I use the planet as a bit of a guide, where have I got the darkest bit? Kind of this angle. So I reckon if I grab a block, that's more like it. Grab a block and start maybe here. And come out of the way. So my thought was to build something that kind of feels like scaffolding or girders out of the uh, light up blocks. I will probably, I intend to weld these all up and not leave them as scaffolding. Uh, but put some cross beams and other supports into them so that even when welded up, they still give that kind of scaffolding look. So I want to do a cross shape, but I also want to leave an odd, oops. I also want to leave an odd number of blocks across this way. So I think the way to do that will be block, 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 do that. And then come back up here. Yeah, so I think that gives you an idea of how I'm planning on doing this. So I'll have a cross running down that way, a cross running down that way, two beams going out. And then underneath, I'll have two beams supporting the kind of station that's out there. And then the conveyor lines will run back from this to the uh, industrial area that's on the asteroid. Now, my plan for this little station bit is to make something kind of... An irregular octagon. So I'm going to go with the light armor slopes because I want to use the corners and inverted corners for the short sides of the octagon. So like this. Let's see if I've got that size about what I'm thinking. Maybe a little bit. Uh oh. Fuel oh no. Flow. Uh, Splitsy, what have you done? Fuel critical. Ah. <laughs> ah, so I've run out of hydrogen. My oxygen is also running low, so I need to quickly do something. Uh, 184, shift K. Terminal, uh, remote. Control. Let's turn on the lights. It is on. Well, looks like I am using the remora to retrieve myself, hopefully before I run out of oxygen. I'm lucky that I wasn't any further away, because I'm right near the limit of my suit's antenna range. Also, how much fuel does this little trip use? That's going to be worth knowing. So as you can see, this has used a decent amount of fuel up. That's why I didn't use the remora to mine the asteroid while I was mining by hand. So I was worried that I would run out if I did that. Okay, we are settled. Fuel critical. <laughs> well, I guess the remora is going to stay up here now. It's, I'm going to be up here for a bit. Fill up my hydrogen. And what I will do, just to make it safer, is grab a couple of the hydrogen bottles from here and take them down to the base below and leave them full down there just in case I run out of hydrogen down there. Up here I've got access to the remora, down there I'll have access to these bottles. <sighs> because that, <laughs> that was not good. Ow! Oh, ow! One health! How did I not die? Oh, that bit of asteroid came out of nowhere! <laughs> Ow. Ow. Oh man, I'm not having a good run the last five minutes. Ugh. And now I sit and wait for my health to come back. There's my irregular octagon. So I deliberately made the angled sides longer at the lower side from this perspective and shorter at the top. As I kind of like that slightly irregular shape. And then what I'll have will be two supports coming in underneath, probably in line with these beams that come out. And then conveyor system coming under here. And the reason the conveyor system will come underneath is that I intend to build the launching mechanism for sending stuff back down to the planet underneath there. So some sort of catapult is what I'm thinking. I want to be able to launch stuff without using any thrusters. Thrusters take cobalt, cobalt isn't up here, so 
I want to be able to just passively, well, when I say passively, I mean the thing launched will be passive apart from its parachute. The thing launching it will use either pistons or rotors or a combination of the two to try and get the thing launched roughly in line with where the base is. The closer I can get it, the better. So now, with that kind of laid out, I'm just going to fill in the gap. What I first want to do is get some solar panels up and running up there. Because if I can get some power up there, I can get some light up here. And as the sun is soon going to be below the platform, or might already be below the platform, it's going to get really dark. And I know that really dark and this much scaffolding is very difficult to interpret when you're watching a video. So I would prefer you guys to be able to actually see what I'm doing. It means that... Oh means that one of the first things I'm going to do with this is weld it up. As soon as I get a drill rig up here, I'm going to weld this thing up so that I've got a better backdrop to look against. Because all of this shiny metal does not work so well. It seemed to use about 5 or 6% of my fuel on the remora to bring it up here. So I probably only got enough fuel to do a couple of trips bringing things here. Especially since it's always more fiddly when you're trying to get something to merge down. So I need to optimize what I do bring up here and what I leave down there and just grind down at a later stage. That should be plenty big enough for the remora to sit on it and potentially any future craft. As well as having enough room for me to build a pressurized living area. So solar panels first and my plan with that was why I made this an odd number across so that I had somewhere perfectly centered that I could place the uh, thing, the solar panels. So what I'm going to do is place a ladder there because that's just going to look like a, kind of a brace for what I'm going to place underneath it which will be using some catwalk. I will get an attachment point. There we go, that one. Can then place a conveyor junction underneath. Make sure it's the right one. I am trying very hard to put these conveyor labels all up the right way. Because there is that one position you can put these in so that Energy it does that. Low. But it is one of those things that's just very hard to remember to do all the time. Uh, I think I'll go advanced road straight on there. I'm going to have to make new solar panels, I think. Because if I use the ones that are down at the other base, they then won't have power and then I could get into a spot of bother with that. So the oxygen farms, I'm actually going to start across this block and I'll show you why in a moment. We start there. I am then left with a way to attach some armor plate to here. And I need to do that because, before I place down the next block, solar panels do not attach to oxygen farms. Other stuff can, like blocks can, full blocks, but the solar panels can't. So what I need to do is bring down a line along this side and then attach the solar panels to that. And my plan is actually to attach them on that armor there, like so. Which then they'll be attached to each other but I'll be able to expand that attachment down further as I go along. So I'll bring out more rows of armor in between the oxygen farms so that I can get more and more. Uh, so that it's not just attached at one end. Because <laughs> that's always a bit sketchy when it's your only power source. So I'll lay out enough for placing down six solar panels. Since that kind of got me by at the other base for the moment. And the other thing to lay out while I'm thinking about power situations is to put down some batteries. So the batteries, I need to quickly lay out a little bit of where the airlock will be for the living quarters. I want the living quarters to be on this side because I want to have a view out to the gas giant. Because that's a pretty spectacular view out a window to be able to look up there, see the gas giant, look down, see Omicron. We've got... Uh, I think it's an ice moon over there. Probably Europa. If I put down a door there and have a three-way airlock, door here out to the landing pad and another door here. We're getting inside. That means my wall 
will be on that row. And I'm probably going to end up with a pretty bland wall, so I'm going to stick the batteries a bit out onto the landing pad area. Pop, say, two of them down with maybe a cargo container next to it. And then further along from it, leaving a little bit of a gap, will be some oxygen tanks. So that'll kind of give us an idea of where the wall is going to be, if you can make it out. No, it's hard. Uh, where the wall will be for the living area. It's not going to be huge, but it'll be big enough for me to decorate it quite nicely, I think. And then the remora will fit here, or whatever craft. It should work nicely. Alright, let's order up a few bits for these solar panels and for the rotor. Silicon 520. I don't have any silicon, do I? Ugh. Alright. I'm gonna have to probably... Oh, I really didn't want to have to do this. But I am gonna have to expand this drill rig. So my plan with these drills is to pop another one on there like that. With the two conveyors between, I should still be able to drill out every bit of stone. I don't think... I never feel confident that I can get away with three. I believe some people say that you can, but I always fear that doing that, I'm going to end up with some those tiny little voxel pieces stuck in the middle of nowhere. That's going to make it very difficult for me to... Well, it's going to make it very unsafe for the conveyors as they slide past, since this thing's turning. There we go, like that. And then same underneath. And then what I'll do is I'll drill out the required space for this to be able to turn around. I'll drill it out manually as it's turning and doing its first spin, and then I'll be able to, to push the pistons out once I've cleared that area. There we go. Drill's on. And send this spinning very slowly. And I will fly around drilling out what I think I'm going to need to to allow the drills to pass so they can do a full rotation. Oh, what the... No! Ah, the piston went out. Oh, I wondered what was going on. I thought this was a bit odd. Did I not see that earlier? How much stone did I get out of my corkscrew that I just drilled out? Stone. 121,000. And one of the drills is disconnected. This makes for a significant waste of time. Am I going to try and thread this back through the same hole that it carved out? Let's grab of those and head up top because I am almost out of hydrogen and oxygen. Last time some of you might have noticed a brief comment I made about the skybox. I changed it up. I've gone back to one that I used to use a fair bit which is the Milky Way skybox and it's made the nights very very dark. Like without my torchlight you can't really make out much of anything. So I'm going to, for the time being, keep with it and just try and remember to put more lights down for, well, everything. Because I'm going to need to make sure that... Yeah, well, show, make sure that you guys can see what the heck is going on. How does that do? <laughs> it's a small improvement. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not great. Okay, that's a bit better. A little bit. <laughs> I definitely need to weld up this floor as a high priority. Okay, so I've established some power up here. I should probably build at least one of these batteries before I start moving anything else up here because I will need to be able to set up a drill and other things like that and refine and whatnot. But I'm just trying to think about what I can move from down to the other base. I want to move something. I want to feel like I didn't just rebuild an entire base <laughs> without taking advantage of some of the effort I put in last week to build the other base. And I'm really not sure which is going to, like, what's going to be the optimal thing to move. These conveyors would probably be useful because they take a moderate amount of resources to build, but trying to get them into the right spot is going to be very difficult. These oxygen farms, they, I could almost certainly move, but I can move them later. There's no urgency to moving them. Uh, so... I'll just probably leave that conveyor line and leave the oxygen farms there for the moment and move them up once I'm ready. The cargo containers, while they're full, are probably way, way, way too heavy to lift. But 
a fair bit of resources goes into building them, so they could be worth moving, especially as they contain metal grids. In fact, they're the only blocks on here that contain metal grids, so they're probably the most important thing to move. Maybe if I build a large container up the top and then offload as much from these into it as possible, move the refinery and assembler up there, or build a new refinery up there probably, and build the proper assembler up there rather than building one of those cheapy ones, then hopefully over time this stuff will be refined so that the stone isn't so giant and next to impossible for me to move by hand. That might work out. There might be a small enough amount of iron and material that I could move it by hand. The piston's finished now, so that's all that's going to be drilled out with this drill rig. So how much stone is there to process? We have 799,000 stone and 122,000 iron ore. Feels like that might take the drills quite some time. <laughs> I mean, the drills? The refinery, quite some time. It might be worth building a second. Let's get the parts I need for a refinery. Because I am going to add a second basic refinery down here. Might attach it directly to this one. That way I'll get through all that stone fast enough that hopefully I'll be able to um, empty out those cargo containers and move them today. I think this will be worth it. Time-wise, I mean, given the, re given the resources I'm limited by here, which is the oxygen and my food and water, time is a resource now. It's not about doing things the most efficient way in terms of iron and things like that, because I've got plenty of access to that. It's more about getting things done quickly. Oh, good, the sun's coming back. Oh, I need to set up my programmable block to maximize these solar panels as soon as I've got the uh, battery up and running. I feel like I finally got a plan of how to do this in an order that makes some sense. It's kind of driving me nuts that I couldn't come up with a way to move everything from down there, or at least move some stuff from down there, and always have a base that is functional. Because that's something I really, really need to make sure of. I want to make sure that I've always got a fully functional refinery assembler complex so that I can build new stuff as I need it. I was a little bit closer on the hydrogen than I'd like it to be. Battery's complete. Let's get the programmable block up and running for this. I'm actually going to put it underneath because I think it'll be an interesting way to do things. Uh, catwalk. Catwalk. Energy low. Go four. And then I'll put a junction here. In fact, where would I put a connector? Maybe I'll go five. I want an open one on one side. Yeah, that way. So leave that open. Then I put a junction under here. The reason I wanted to go the extra block forward is that I think this should line up with where I want to put a connector for the remora. And that means I can put a second junction here. And on top of that second junction, I can place a programmable block. There you go. Like so. And a cool suggestion I was given I'm going to put the solar info script up on the programmable blocks screen. Add easy solar script. Energy critical. Go down to LCD panels and I want this one. The compact one. And we can put that in the name. It'll reformat it. Go to custom data and we can put in. I would like to have the solar stats. I would like to have battery stats. I don't want turbines because there aren't going to be any. And I would like oxygen stats on here too. Okay. There we go. All nicely displayed. Should probably get power. Let's have a look at these shadows. Oh, I'm not quite square onto it, but I'm pretty close. If I was square on the... Shadows would just cast straight onto the solar panel next to the oxygen farms, but it's not too far off. Certainly close enough for my purposes. Now, I need to decide where I'm going to put the cargo containers so that I can place down one ready for the next two to be placed beside them. Again, it's going to be horribly exposed, but I'm kind of okay with that. 
Just need to make sure that I can fit the extra two on. So maybe if I place the first one around here-ish. Yeah, drill this out a bit. And then I'll shove it in there. Because then I should be able to drop the other two right next to it. I'm planning on finally using the advanced welding mod that I've had in the save obviously since the beginning and just never used so that I don't have to use merge blocks. I'm just keen to try it. I don't know that I've got a huge advantage in it, using it in this setting, but I think it'd be good to try it out. Yeah, that's perfect. So I can place that there and that way I am heading towards that iron deposit that's there because I think that's the one I'll go for. I'm in a roughly straight-ish line for it, but I could build a big drill rig over here that's kind of sitting out that'll push in along that 100 meters toward that iron. And having these cargo containers kind of sets up well for that, and then I can put all my production stuff over here in this gap between here and the next beam. Hopefully that'll work nicely. I need those refineries to continue operating until they've run out all that stone. And the iron, because I don't want to move the ores, they're just too bulky to move by hand. So, I think I might do first, possibly build the assembler up there. Build the advanced assembler, like the proper assembler up there, and then I'll build the drill. And in the time it takes me to build the drill, hopefully most of this will get processed, because it is getting processed fairly quickly. And then once all that's processed, I can move the refineries up to the top. Okay, assembler done. I'll build some catwalks and things in here so that I can ac access all this stuff without having to use my jetpack. That means I just need to wait on this stuff getting refined and then I can try and do a transfer. I should probably line up stuff for where I want to put these two refineries. Energy low. How is the process looking? Okay, we're on to the iron. Sweet. It shouldn't be too much longer. Something interesting I've noticed up here with refilling my hydrogen all of the time is that I think it's actually helping me to not forget about it in an odd way. Because I have to keep an eye on it all of the time, I don't get distracted by having not have, like, having that situation where I haven't dealt with it in so long that I've actually forgotten that it's a thing I have to remember, <laughs> for want of a better way to say that. Um, so I kind of feel like it's actually helping me to not run out. If my hydrogen lasted longer, it'd last so long that I would forget about it entirely. And then I'd be in a bit of strife. Now, these weld things. There we are. Weld pad. I have never used these. So this could get interesting. I believe I put one on here and I put one on the other bit of the refinery and then they'll both get destroyed when they clamp it down. And they're a lot cheaper than a merge box, so it kind of does work together with... Oh, scrap. Might start fairing a few of the bits and pieces up while I'm waiting for the refineries to finish the last of that iron off. I could probably use the remora to ferry a little bit of this stuff up, but I kind of want to save it's fuel for moving actual blocks. Because that's the one thing I can't do by hand. Okay, iron is roughly in this direction, so... Let's start setting up this drill rig. I think I can potentially set this drill rig up much more effectively than I've set up any of the previous ones. So, the idea I've got in mind is setting up some pistons that'll push out and then I'll build starting the rig and then I'll compress in to push the rig even further and deeper in. If I were to put a rotor on here, oriented this way, assuming the rotor is strong enough, which it may well not be, so I might need to leave myself enough space to put in some piston contraption to keep it, uh, to make it so I can hold its angle. I'd then be able to tilt up and down and chop away a whole lot of the asteroid at once and perhaps target down lower into the asteroid to hit that iron if it's kind of skimming the top going at this, going directly horizontal. And then I want 
curved. Advanced rotor. Do the same with it. Lock it in place. So I don't want them to move initially. Then I can put... Oh. Did I... Don't just do this as a straight line. Yeah. I'm not going to do this as just a straight line. I'm going to... Com I'm going to compress this down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go big or go home. So that should give me 60 meters of projection, which is still not going to quite reach the iron. Uh, I might put another one on there and then put my rotor on here. The reason for the extra one there is that I think with the rotor, I was going to be just... I felt like I was going to be cutting it too fine against these, but I probably wasn't. So, the plan. Extend out to... So if I've got one drill there, and I should be able to go out to there to place the next one on each side. Yeah. And then all I need to do is not bump things. Then all I need to do is pipe back towards this one, and I'm... Well, whatever, I'll do that. <laughs> That'll look a bit strange, but for industrial designs, I never mind having too many pipes. Oh, I should probably go a bit bigger than that. Might go nine across. The reason I'm going even bigger is I'm looking at where these pistons are, and I want to make sure that I've got more than enough clearance for them uh, as I rotate stuff around and do everything like that. Okay. I reckon I've got enough materials to build this whole thing. I hope I do. And we've got still a little bit of iron being refined, but the cargo containers are, apart from some hydrogen, which I might... Yep, I will take with me. <laughs> Oops. We're pretty much ready to go from the shuffle, and it's probably a good time to do it because it is daytime. It's sun up rather than sun down. Okay, I'm going to empty those things out and then that's going to be what I do before I build the other mining rig. I'll need to add a landing gear to the remora somewhere as well. Need, must not forget that. Okay, the refineries are done. Perfect, I can move them. Everything is in that one large cargo container. Nope. The assembler's going. Where is it? Does it have to? Could have a backup basic assembler up there. Yeah, why not? Get rid of the conveyor tube. And then put my weld pad on there. And let's cut this loose. Okay, that might have been an error in judgment. <laughs> oh no. Uh, I did not want to pick it up that way. What am I going to do? Uh, I'm just going to have to pick it up, take it up there and figure it out up there. Lift. Okay. Alright, I got a hold of it. Relatively vertical. Let's try and get out of here. Without smashing it to pieces. 37% fuel remaining. That could certainly be better. Hopefully I can tilt far enough the other way, which I'm pretty sure I can, so that I can slot this in. Come on. Oh! It locked! Yes! Refineries are here! Ha ha ha! Success! Um, I need to offload everything from those cargo containers before I can move them up here. But that's one step closer. Splitzy is a happy camper. That's really cool and it does a little welding effect as it clips on. I've now got a backup basic assembler to... Well, I guess it can go to cooperative mode. And it'll help with some production. Or I can just use it to produce the tons of steel plate I'm going to need for that platform. Either or, I guess. Have anything down here with cargo space? After I get rid of these. No. That's a pity. Because I would like to leave these hydrogen bottles down here, but... It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do that unless I build a cargo container down there specifically for it. Which I might do. 
just for safety's sake. Two more trips. Goes to show, from all that stone, I really didn't get all that much in the way of materials. Because I've been able to move it all by hand without too much hassle. Like, it, it's obviously been a bit of a hassle, but... Not the sort of, oh, this has taken me days to move this by hand. Sort of hassle. So the world pads are intended to be destroyed in the linking process. Uh, which means that anytime you use them, you are going to use up resources. But I'm quite okay with that in this context. Because I'm always going to use up resources with merge blocks anyway. Because I have to grind them down and destroy stuff. So I think... There's a chance that it could be cheaper doing it this way than doing it with merge blocks. Because of... Oh, scrap. Right, here's the test. Moment of truth. Can I lift? No, 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 don't push it. Okay, I'm locked. Yep, I can lift it without too much trouble either. Awesome. Now, I haven't put the weld pad on this, which I should have done before I lifted it. So now I'm going to have to carry it while I quickly put it on there. Fuel is running low on the remora. Don't think I'm going to be doing much in the way of silver hunting with the remora this trip. Which I'm a bit sad about. Yeah! Locked. Awesome. Sure. Remora can lock that. Why not? Sweet! I'm ready to build my drill rig. Let's get it running. I know these pipes are basically pointless. They are there for decoration. The ones that connect behind the cargo containers. I always like putting extra pipes and unnecessary pipes in my production facilities because it makes it feel more inscrutable and just a bit more messy. I like that look. Well, I like that look for production facilities. Sweet. Almost got the giant draw rig done and finished. Yeah. I just got to name the whole thing. We have light, we have pistons, we have drills, we've got everything good to go. Just going to check all of the piston heads are uh, constructed. Looks good. Rotor parts are constructed. We should be good to start drilling. All right. Drills on. Oh, no, we're not good to start drilling. Uh... Distance. All of these are going to get share inertia tensor. And so actually no, just the drill. Just the pistons. Alright. Now let's turn it on. Still got a bit of wobble. Uh since these aren't gonna move, I'm gonna share inertia tensor on them too. The one at the head needs to remain off, because otherwise it doesn't seem to turn whenever I do that. Head rotor, let's set this to a velocity of 0.1. Possibly make it go a little bit faster than that. But I just want to make it go round once, because I think there's going to be a couple of little bits of stone here that I have to clear out by hand before I can start extending the whole thing. This is going to make a giant hole in this asteroid. <laughs> Excellent. That's what I want. Get really lucky. Yeah, iron might extend just a bit further than that, but I suspect I'm going to need to do some sort of expansion on this to be able to hit that iron. It was either that or build a huge long conveyor tube to reach it anyway, so I figure this was a reasonable option. There we go. Alright, time for you to go fast. Yeah, that'll work. That's working. So, Energy another thing I need to do before today is over, or another thing I want to do anyway, is I want to launch a beacon down to the planet to get an idea of how close or far away I might be. Actually, I'm not going to launch a beacon, I'm going to launch an antenna with a remote control block and maybe a camera, because then I can watch it as it falls. So, I need stuff for... A large small grid battery. I want to use the big battery because I don't think small batteries will power the antenna for long enough at full range for me to get an idea of how close I am. I'm not completely certain that I need to have the remote control. I think I do because when in control of the remote control I should have a an accurate readout to how far I am from the base whereas if I just 
remote into a control to look at the camera. I don't think I get that. No parachute hatches. Canvas in them. And both of these set to auto deploy. Let's go 1500 just to be safe. Antenna, full range. Info, drop, test, one. All right. Uh, drills are still doing their thing. Three, two, one. Geronimo! <laughs> uh, I'm going to hop into the remora and remote into that. What is it seeing? <laughs> I've got no control. It's just <laughs> a camera. <laughs> oh, this could be cool. Parachute's deployed. It is shaky. <laughs> Who likes shaky cam? Well, that is unpleasant. Oh, no. Set re Oh, boy. There's a squid that's not happy with me. That's not good. How did I manage to drop on a cargo ship? That's just rude. Anyway, I am... 3.3 kilometers from base. I'm imagining this squid is gonna s very much kill this little drop pod soon. Ah, oh. <laughs> That's so not okay. 2.74 from base. At least I know the remora boosters are intact. I'm about to start getting shot. Yep. Yep. Nope. It's gone. <sighs> That's sad. I really hope that doesn't do any more damage to the base. I don't think it will because it should come after me. And it's not going to be able to find a path to me, so it's just going to crash. Well, that was a valid test, but I can't believe I timed it that poorly that I landed right on a cargo ship, so it spawned a drone. That's just ridiculous. Uh, these pistons are definitely going slower than they need to. Uh, which one's the reversing one? 405,000 stone. I really hope this can reach some iron. I don't think it can, but I really hope it can. I'm trying to decide how I would add more pistons after I see how far this goes. I probably should have just done more, but I was a little bit worried that I'd end up with kind of a contraption like this with a snake that's too big to manage any sort of re fitting behind any reasonable sort of drill head. So probably what I'll do when I bring them back is do another snake like that, but in front of it. So that the thing can go out to like 150 meters or so. That way I should be able to collect a huge amount of that iron ore since I can direct this drill head using these rotors. Hopefully. I haven't actually tested whether they're strong enough yet. But I'm not going to do it while it's in operation. That would be very, very dumb. Well, with this drill operational, I'm likely to be able to collect so much stone that these oxygen farms and more solar panels are going to be quite easy to build. And then I should be able to build some sort of decorative home base that I can live in that might be pressurized. So there's all that and plenty more to come and plenty more drops. Hopefully they don't get destroyed and I will see you then.